Hello, my friends. Welcome to another episode of Deep True Crime. I'm Manny Rodriguez. In today's episode, an ex-FBI agent who I've been following on Twitter quite a bit, she believed that the University of Idaho mass murderer could be an incel with perverted anger towards women. And he believes that the killer came to a boiling point. As this is her theory because we don't really know. She is an ex-FBI agent. She would know how to think and look from side of things, right? And she believes that this bloody incident of four university students could be a case of femicide with three of the victims being a woman. Which totally makes sense. Ethan was there spending the night. Did the perp know that Ethan was there? We don't know that answer either. At all. And so, now that we're six weeks into this, now six weeks and one day, this literally has rocked the whole town. So, former FBI agent Jennifer Kuffendoffer, she claims that the investigators will be looking at everyone associated with each victim but believes that could be a, be a very outlying individual because of the lack of an arrest. And so that's what she is sharing. But she also believes that the killer could have put up, could have built up anger against one or more of the slain students, but added that her main theory is that the killer is someone with perverted thoughts and anger toward women. And she shares that involuntary celibates or incels they are part of a mis misogynistic subculture on shady online forums where users exchange fantasies about rape and mass incidents like this and so she was speaking to newsweek and she said they're known as incels who has watched this house, who is seeing all of these beautiful girls go in and out and their rage and their own personal horrific desires they realized that night. That's what she's sharing. Do you, what are your thoughts on this? What, what do you think? Could it be? She, okay, I'm gonna respect her thoughts, number one, because she is an ex-FBI ex agent. She's been at this for a while right so i definitely am going to respect her thoughts i've not personally thought of that but it makes sense because she this is a house full of women all women lived there that were on the lease they were all women there were no males that lived there ethan was spending the night with his girlfriend Zana, and so this is a house full of women and she said that somebody still in that area, somebody that has seen these beautiful girls because only girls live there, right? An individual with absolutely horrible murderous desires about these women, a femicide type case. And it came to a boiling point combined with an opportunity. Now, femicide can be split into two categories, intimate and non-intimate with you know, with the former relating to the killing of women by current or former partners. That very well could be why people are thinking about Jack D. Again, I don't think Jack D has anything to do with this. Straight up, I'm saying that. I do not think that. Now, non-intimate, that means that the killing of women by people who they were not close with, right? With... And Koffendoffer, she was adding that the killer may have been someone who knew the victims very loosely, watched them around campus, saw them, be, maybe has been to the house, I'm theorizing, maybe has been to the house with someone else who attended the party, right? Because we know that the girls, they party there as well. This was known as a party house. And Jennifer Koffendoffer, she continued, in other words, the people there might not even know him other than he was around at the peripheral, but somebody who would have gone unnoticed. That's what she is sharing. She continues, so you have a perfect storm that night, and this person familiar with the house, familiar with when they came and left, and familiar with that area to be able to leave quickly 
familiar with the tree line of where they could have sur surveilled the house and seen the lights go on and off and so on and so forth. That's what Jennifer Koffendoffer shared. And she believes that the person who killed the students had issues in and of themselves that they've acted on. And so the former agent justified her point by pointing to the murder of Michelle Martinko, who was killed in 1979 when she was 18 in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. That's how she was given an example of what could possibly happen. You see, her killer, Jerry Burns, was arrested in 2018 and was not a close acquaintance with the case being solved by DNA. And so that's interesting in and of itself. The new theories that come as the ex-boyfriend of a victim in this incident is heartbroken that half of America thinks he slaughtered the love of his life and three of her friends. That's what a relative has shared. Again, Jack D has not spoken out yet, I don't think. Now, this kind of goes along with Kaylee breaking up with Jack just three weeks before this incident, which has, you know, which has baffled the whole world right now. Jack D, again, he was ruled out, literally. And so everyone's just pointing, for, to pointing him because of reasons like that. When they break up three weeks before this incident, yeah, that would make sense. But if he's been ruled out, I, I get it. I totally get it because even myself, I have I have my doubts on things. I just don't think that Jack D has anything. Maybe I'm just giving him the benefit of the doubt because I know that this doesn't happen every single time, right? And so it still is a heartbreaking thing that he, here he is having to deal with someone who he dated for a while, had a very strong relationship with, and now he's has, having to hide and stay away from the public, not go back to school because people are pointing fingers at him, which doesn't make them like, I don't understand it. I, I get why you might think that, but at the same time, I don't think that we should just be pointing fingers. I think we should be very careful who we're pointing fingers at. Wouldn't you agree with that? You know, hey, just like you, I want justice. You see Chief Fry here, he wants justice too. His heart is breaking. And if you know something, please say something. Please say something. Because I know that the there's a public outcry over the lack of results in this investigation and Chief Fry promises it will not get cold, which tells me they have more than we know. They're up to like, what, 15,000? Tips, 15,000 probably, something along those lines. But when and why have they not found more on this white car? That part baffles me as well. It could be hiding in a garage somewhere. It literally could be hiding in a garage somewhere. We don't know. It could literally be something that has been burned by now and no one knows about it. It could be so many different things, but my guess is there's a lot more video footage than we know of. There's a lot more things about this than we know of, though they haven't named any person of interest or a suspect. I do believe they have someone on their radar. But I think that when they say that they need this car because there is critical information, I'm buying that story. I'm buying that this, there is critical information about this car. My friends, at the end of the day, we all want justice. Let's try to get it in a respectful manner. And I like that we are pushing for answers. Because that makes the cops stay on top of it. And no one's pushing for answers more than the parents and the family members. Because they want justice. They, many of them are saying that they trust the cops. They do believe that the cops will solve this. That's what they are sharing about this. They do believe that the cops will solve this. Do you think that the cops 
will solve this. Let me know in the comments if you think this will be solved or will become a cold case. I personally believe it will be solved. I just don't know when. I do believe it's before it goes cold, right? That makes sense to me. What about to you? Do you think this will become a cold case? My friends, I'm Manny Rodriguez, and the whole purpose of this is to keep you updated and be a voice for the victims because now they need as many voices to be heard because we need justice for Idaho 4. Hashtag justice for Idaho 4. That justice for Gabby went viral. This needs to go viral because I'm not seeing a lot of justice for Idaho 4 out there. And I truly believe this cannot go cold. And I don't think it will. If this is the type of content you like to follow, hit that subscribe button, click on that like, and hit that notification bell. That way you get notified whenever I go live or I share content that you may want to, to keep following. 